All right, hey guys, today we are going to make a simple game here on Scratch and some of the skills that we will be learning involve how to move our sprites around with user input. So instead of just having them move this way in some predetermined fashion, we will be able to allow the user to decide which way they want to move these sprites. We will also learn how to keep score and learn how to make a little shooting effect among some other things. So here I am on the Scratch homepage. I'm gonna to go to Create. And I'm always going to title my game first so I don't get a bunch of untitled in my folder. And you can title it whatever you want, but I think I will title it Stop the Butterflies. Okay. And I don't need this guy right here, so I'm going to get rid of him. So I want to import a new sprite, and you can pick whatever you want, doesn't really matter, but for the purposes of this game right here, I am going to pick the spaceship first, which should be in transportation. Uh, there we go. Okay, and that is way too big for my game. So if you go up here, you could either grow it or you could shrink it, and I wanna shrink it, so I'm gonna click on that, and then if I go to the spaceship, and just click it, it will make it as small as I want. And if I make it too small like that, I could go here to grow and make it grow until I have it just so. So what we're going to do is we want to, for the user to be able to control the spaceship by using the arrow keys. And if you recall from last time, Direction in Scratch is controlled on the x-axis, which is the horizontal plane, and the y-axis, which is the vertical plane. So knowing that, we are going to go here to events, and we always start off everything with our little green flag clicked. And we are going to go to one of these statements right here. This is a conditional statement where if something happens, then this thing happens. So if I go to sensing, and I go to space key pressed, I don't want that, but if I click this little arrow, the right arrow. So if the right arrow is pressed, then I want something to happen. Now if I go over here, I could see this change X, not set X, I want to change X by 10. So now if the right arrow key is pressed, then it's going to change X by 10. Now, a common mistake is just if you click it like there, that's not going to work because if it only happens if you press the right arrow key at the precise moment that you click the green flag, and we don't want that. So we want forever, when the green flag is clicked, forever, if the right arrow is pressed, then we want to change X by 10. And now I'm going to press the green flag, and you can see as I press the right arrow, it moves to the right. And I'm going to duplicate this, and I'm just going to switch a little bit. I'm going to go, if the left arrow is pressed, then I want to change X by negative 10. So I can go back and forth like that, and that controls my spaceship. Now I also want to go up and down. So um, remembering that going up and down is controlled by the Y axis, I am going to duplicate this one time and duplicate this one time. And change X isn't going to work for up and down. So I want to get rid of those. And I want to go back to motion and I want to get change Y. So now if the up arrow is pressed, I want to change Y by 10. If the down arrow is pressed, I want to change Y by negative 10. And now you'll see that when I press this, I can control my spaceship in whichever direction I choose. Okay, uh, one other thing that's important, don't, you can see that when, some people just go here and then they, um, you know, put their change Y right here. Don't do that, That this seems to work a lot better even though it's slightly more steps. You wanna do it this way instead of doing it this way, it just seems to work better. All right, um, so now what we're gonna do is we have our spaceship but we are going to have a swarm of butterflies coming at us, so we want to do something with these butterflies besides just trying to avoid them. We want to be able to shoot a little ball at them to try to knock them off their course. So we need to make that ball, and I'm going to paint this sprite. 
and make sure it is in the filled in. And over the little X, make sure it's over the little X. Um, if it's not, it'll look a little funky. So go over there. And I had a black one, but pick whatever color you want. And let's see how it looks. That could be a little smaller. So I'm going to use my shrink tool. And I'm going to make it. Yeah, it looks good. Okay. Now, so what we want to happen to this is that this, like, we can't just have it go to X one point and Y one point because we need to have it always be moving around with the ship. So what we can do for that is that when the green flag is clicked, we're going to have go to X and Y X. But what we want to do is if you go to sensing, you can see the X position of Sprite one. And if you click here, you could have Y position, direction, costume name, and Sprite two. And we want this to follow our spaceship. So go to X position of spaceship. So it's, for X, it's going to go to whatever X position, X position of my spaceship is. It will go there. And then if I do this with Y position, it will. Uh, but, 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 there we go. So now, no matter where I put my spaceship, the ball will go there. Okay. Now, we don't want the ball just sticking out there, so we want to make sure it's hiding. So I'm going to go up here and click hide. And now we're going to do another conditional statement where if, for this case, I'm going to have it be the space key. If the space key is pressed, then we want to make sure, once again, it is going to the X position uh, and and the Y position of the spaceship. And we want to, we had hit it before, so we want to make sure that it's showing up. So we want to show it. And then, so there's two ways of movement here in Scratch. You can do what we did with the spaceship, which is controlling the X and Y with the left and right arrow. And, but we could also do something called steps. And that's, we're going to, I'm, we're purposely using both of these just so you could kind of feel around with them and see which one you like to use better and which one works better for whatever particular game that you are working on. So what a step does, if you go over here to motion, you can see turn 15 degrees, point in 90 degrees. On this 360 degrees, you could have the ball point in any direction or you could have any sprite point in any direction. And what the move a certain amount of steps does is that whatever direction it's pointing in, it will move in that direction. So if you are going 90 degrees and you're moving 10 steps, it will go in that 90 degrees. The change X and Y don't have any bearing on this. So that's what we're going to do for this. So I want to move 10 steps. Now I don't want it to just move 10 steps one time and then stop because that would yeah, it's, it's going to be really slow. So I want it to keep on going until it does something. And that one thing is going to be touching the wall. So if I go up to repeat until, and then back to sensing, touching, oops, touching the edge, um, it will do this. So now if I go here, show. Um, until it is touching the edge, it is going to continuously move 10 steps. And it will repeat the 10 steps over and over again. If you were to go to 20 steps, say, it would go quicker. If you go to 5 steps, it would go slower. So I want to wrap this in a forever loop because just like before, we want the space key to trigger these events forever, not just at the precise moment that this green flag is clicked. So if I press the green flag, this ball should go to the spaceship, it's gonna hide. And now wherever I move my spaceship, if I press my space key, it's gonna to go to that position, the X position of the spaceship and the Y position. It's going to show, and until it touches the edge, it's going to move 10 steps. So let's see how this works. Okay, so it's going sideways right now, but that's because of the direction that it is pointing in. We need to affect it so that 
whatever direction the spaceship is pointing in is the direction that it will move. So I'm just gonna finish up this real quick. I'm going to have it go to hide right there. And then I'm gonna have it go back. I'm just gonna repeat this. I'm gonna have it go back to where it was before. Okay, so that's the movement for that. But as you could see before, it was moving in the wrong direction and that's no good. So let's have it point in certain directions based on what directions we choose. So I'm gonna go back to my spaceship here. And I'm gonna have my spaceship if I press the A, I want it to turn to the left. If I press the S, I want it to turn to the right. So I'm gonna go to, as always, when my green flag is clicked. And I wanna start off the game making sure it is pointing like that. So I'm gonna have it point 90 degrees. That's in the direction that it's currently in. If I were to um, have it do any of these different ones, it would point in a, in a different direction. And then another conditional statement, if, the A key is pressed. If the A key is pressed, we want to turn it. Now the A is on the left side of S, so we want to turn it left 15 degrees. And making sure this is wrapped in a forever loop, go here, and that should work. Now we need to do the same thing, um, but for the S, so if I duplicate this, and I don't need to have it point in direction twice because I already do it with this one sprite right here. So now if the S, was it S, yeah. If the S key is pressed, I'm just gonna move this one out and I'm gonna change it to the right. Okay, so now if this is pressed, if I press the A key, it will turn around like that. And the S key will make it go right and so forth. Now, what we want to do is we want to make sure that this ball is following the same exact commands as the spaceship so that it shoots in the direction. If it, if we have like this and it and, and we press space, it just goes like that's that's no good. So we want the same commands to be given to um, sprite number one. So I'm going to go to duplicate. Oops. Actually, you don't need to press duplicate. I think if you just drag it over, it'll go back there. Yeah. So I should have both of these right here. And now this is going to follow the exact same commands as the spaceship so that um, whatever direction that the spaceship is pointing in, it will go. So there we go. And it's still going out the side. That is because this needs to be going up. All right, so they're not gonna have the exact same commands. You want the ball to be pointing up. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay, and you can see now that whatever direction it's pointing in, it shoots. So we have two different ways of movement of this spaceship right here. We can control it with our arrows, and we could also control the direction that it's shooting in. Okay. All right, so now what we need is we need something for the spaceship to both shoot and avoid. We need a common enemy. And a natural common enemy for us is going to be the butterfly. Although you could have it be whatever you want. If you want it to be a bat, that's cool too. If you really hate ballerinas and you want that, that's great. But um, for I'm just gonna pick the butterfly which there he is all right and that is too big i don't want a butterfly twice as big as a spaceship that is scary so i'm going to have him be about that size right there and if you watch the previous tutorial um the movement that the butterfly is going to have is going to be similar to what we did uh with the with scratchy in the first tutorial so we are just going to have him, when, when the green flag is clicked, we're gonna have him go to a spot. And I'm gonna, we want him to start up here. 
So if he goes to x negative 19, y135. Um, so the y axis is good, but we don't want him going to the same x point every single time because that would get predictable. So if you go over here to operators, you can see this pick random block right here. So we're going to have him go all the way over from negative 220 to positive 220. Negative 220 to positive 220. Now, whenever the green flag is clicked, he's going to pick a random x, um, a random point on the x-axis from negative 220 to positive 220, but he's always going to go to y135. So let's see how this looks. All right, you can see how it's just a random spot wherever he decides to go. Now, we want him gliding to the bottom. So we are going to go to motion and we are gonna have glide right here. And I was playing around with this before and one second was a little quick. Um, if you want it difficult, you could certainly have one second. You could have 0.1 second. You could have five seconds. It's really up to you. You could play around. This is really simple to play around with. And just like I had the pick random spots here, I'm gonna do the same thing down here, except I don't want positive 135. I want it down at the bottom. So I have negative 155 looks good. So now it's gonna pick a random spot. When the green flag is clicked, it'll pick a random spot um, on the x-axis, but it'll always be on y135 up here. Then it's gonna glide a second and a half to a random x point down here, but always at negative 155. So let's see how this looks. All right. And <coughs> we are going to be given the ability to hide him later. So I'm going to make sure I have show. And I don't want to keep on clicking this, obviously. So I'm going to have forever. And now when this is clicked, it's just going to be raining butterflies. All right. Now, we don't want... Um, we want something to avoid for our spaceship. So what we want to do is we want to, when it is touching the spaceship, we just want the game to be over. So if I go to my when green flag is clicked and I... I don't... Yeah, sorry about that. Um, it, but, 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 we want another conditional statement. And if it is touching the spaceship, it's just we go up here and there's a command that says stop all. Just everything's gonna stop. You can't do anything else, it'll freeze. And that will be the end of the game for you. Always wrapping it in a forever loop. And now let's see, boom, yeah. So um, that just stopped the game right there. We could always press the green flag again, and there it is, but we want to make sure that we uh, we are avoiding him. Now, right now, if we, were, if we were to shoot the butterfly, nothing happens, and that's obviously not what we want, so we need to go back to here, and we need to, actually, let's have the butterfly. We want to have it so that if the, if he is touching Sprite 1, he, he just goes away. So what I'm going to have is forever. One green flag is clicked forever. If touching, no, that's not right. If touching Sprite one, we want to hide it. So now that when the green flag is clicked, that was a little difficult, boom, he goes away. So we could shoot, but if we miss, the game stops. Now, one last thing we are going to add here is a score. So we haven't talked about these yet, but um, this is called data right here. And if you're familiar at all with algebra, you know about variables. If you're not familiar with algebra, don't worry about it. It's a fairly simple concept. And what these variables are, are they're, they're representations of numbers. So if I make a variable, I'm gonna call it score. And you can see the score number here. And if I change score by one, 
it will go up by one. If I change score by five, it'll go up by five. All right, pretty simple. And if I set score to zero, it'll set score to zero. So we want to set the score to zero at the very beginning of the game. Oh, well, let's do it in this sprite. We want to set the score to zero at the, very, at the very beginning of the game. And then if I'm able to shoot a butterfly, I want to change the score not by five, but by one. So now if I shoot, you can see that the score goes up by one. See, that probably would have been better if I had turned. Yeah, there we go. Oh. All right, so you could play around the game at your own leisure. Um, and that is pretty much it. Um, that is the first game maybe you've made on Scratch. So if you follow along, good job. Um, I, you could add a different background. Um, I showed you how to do that before. I don't believe I've done sound yet. So let me just do sound really quick. I want to pick a sound. Let's go to music loops. That would work well for this game. So that's okay. Let me just, I did that kind of quick. If you, um, if you go to the sprite and go to sounds, that's go to sounds and then you want to pick it from the library. Um, let's try the music loops. How about techno? All right, medieval. medieval like that all right so now if I go back here when <laughs> when green flag is clicked forever now this is important I've made this mistake many people make this mistake you uh, you want to go to sound and you want to play sound until done if you just do play medieval forever it will play a extremely quick snippet of medieval and then just go back to the beginning and back to the beginning and back to the beginning like this you can't even hear it so i i want to go to medieval until done and now change the backgrounds I, I will leave it to you to do that but that is uh this game on scratch so i hope that you enjoyed it and i hope that you learned something all right later